Hey, hello guys. This is Karthik from executeautomation.com. This is part four of BDD series. So far in this series, we discussed about what BDD is, what Gherkin is, how Gherkin looks like, what are the syntax of Gherkins. And those are all just a theoretical sessions. From this part, we are going to discuss about the parsers, the tools which support the Gherkins, which is Specflow. We also discuss some of the other tools which are available like Cucumber, Rbehave, Jbehave. But we are going to discuss only Specflow in combination with Visual Studio. So Specflow is also called as a Cucumber for .NET, as you could see in the logo there. So before jumping into this part, I would request you to go through the part 2 and part 3 since those part contains the syntax of Gherkins. So let's get started. So Specflow introduction. Specflow is one of the popular tool used to perform BDD with the help of popular Visual Studio IDE. So we're going to work with Visual Studio. That's the IDE which we're going to use for this whole series. And Specflow can be installed as an extension using NuGet package and there's a command down there as you could see this install package specflow project name my app dot spec so this is the uh, command line that you gotta put in the package manager of Visual Studio which will automatically install the uh, the package from NuGet and you can also download the uh, package specflow package from their own website and that can be installed in your Visual Studio. The beauty of Specflow is you can install the Specflow in Visual Studio Express. And I believe there is a new community edition released by Microsoft, which is more equivalent to the professional version of Visual Studio. So you can just go ahead and download Visual Studio community edition. And also you can install the Specflow using NuGet package in your Visual Studio and you can just start working on that. With all the cool stuff which is available in professional the same thing is available in Visual Studio also okay great so we have seen the concepts of BDD and Kirkin uh, language specification in the previous part but the question is how do the parser that is specflow executes the plain text specified that was the questions which we already had in the previous parts and I told that we're going to see the next series the next part of this series in order for us to see how the parser execute the plain test specified in the in the Gherkins, we'll first install the spec flow in Visual Studio and see practically how things works. So let me first open the Visual Studio. So I have Visual Studio Ultimate installed. You can also install the spec flow in Express Edition or in Community Editions. So first thing, just installed the spec flow in using extensions and updates and search for spec flow as you could see I've already installed the spec flow here so again I don't have to install so I'm just leaving it as it is and you also have to install the n unit test adapter we will talk more about the recorders in the uh, in upcoming series so just for now just install the init test adapter so I'm going to close this extension and update window okay once we have installed the spec flow the next thing we need to do is we need to open or create a new spec flow project and see how it looks like but if you could go to the file new and project there is no project called spec flow as you could search, you can see there is no such project which defines specflow. So where does this specflow actually resides? For that, what we need to do is, let's first create a console application. So I'm going to create a simple console application. And I'm going to give this as specflow Backflow intro and I'm gonna hit OK. So this will actually create a console application for us. So this is the normal console application. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the spec flow. So how do we add the spec flow? It's pretty simple. 
just right click the project hit the add and click the new item there and as you can see here there is three files added in our add new items window one is specflow feature file another one is specflow hooks and another one is specflow step definitions so here the feature is the extension of the file which specflow uses to store all the scenarios so we'll discuss we discussed about scenario scenario outline in the previous parts of this series so the same thing we are going to work with this spec flow so here all the scenario whichever we discussed in Gherkin is actually reside in this particular feature file this concept is actually driven from cucumber since in cucumber all the tests are grouped together into feature files so you can directly read about all this information from github so all the scenarios steps are declared in the feature files so what are steps we are going to create or we're going to tell to the user these scenario steps are declared in the feature files whereas the functionality of these feature files are defined in a special directory called step definitions so we need to create a special directory called step definitions and that folder will actually have all the defined functionality of these steps but in specflow we don't have to create step definitions and store all the steps since specflow do an exploratory search for steps and perform the intended operations so let's first create a feature file so I'm going to create a first feature file for our project so I'm going to say like a sample feature dot feature I'm gonna click add here so this will create me an feature file as you can see here so once this feature has been created as you can see the feature has automatically created some of the sample steps for us it has created a sample features and it has created a sample scenario and it has also stated some of the steps for us like given when then well, that's fine but this is not just enough for specflow to work in order for it to work fully we need to add some more references in order to fully demonstrate that let's first build this project and see what kind of error we get so I'm going to build this project and you can see we're getting some errors it's actually we are missing some references so these references are like tech talk which is nothing but the company name of specflow so we're missing this we're also missing the reference for n unit so these are the two references which we are missing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this reference right click here and I'm going to go to the manage NuGet package so here we need to search for the spec flow so as you can see here spec flow and there is a spec flow dot n unit so let me go ahead and install this so this will automatically install the spec flow and add a reference to my project and then we need to add the specflow.n unit right just close this and try to build the solution once again and you can see that the build got succeeded so this will end our installation of specflow once our build is fully compiled the next thing we need to do is we discussed in our slide stating we have to create a special directory called step definition and that directory will actually hold all the definitions of this particular steps so let's see how to create that so what I'm going to do is I will first try to run this particular test <clears throat> and see how it works so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to go test window and text explorer and you can see that I have this add to number scenario listed in the test explorer so what it says is hey this test is ready to be executed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this test I'm going to run this letter test if I run this particular test it will give me a message as this let me expand this a little bit and you can see the message stating no matching step definitions found for one or more steps and it is also creating me 
a class called step definitions and it's adding some of the codes for our steps which we have so the step I mean is the step which is declared in the feature files so the step here is given I have entered 50 in the calculator so the same is declared here in a coding so what it actually does in behind the scene is this particular feature file so it's actually searching for the code which perform the operation but as of now we don't have any code which matches its operation so it's giving us a suggestion stating we need to add this particular line so what we have to do is we need to add this particular code in our project in order to do that we can do this in two way we can either copy all this and we can directly create a class and add this code or we can explicitly add them like this for this particular feature file well this brings us to the end of part 4 in the next part we'll discuss more about features and steps and how features and step work in collaboration and how we can write the actual working code in step definitions and also in the feature files thank you very much for watching have a great day